أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف خلق الله محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين In our previous episode we spoke about the meaning of Tazkiyah and today we're going to be speaking about the importance of Tazkiyah Now I'm sure you're familiar with the verses in the Holy Quran that speak about the nafs and you know that our Holy Prophet sallallahu has said that this nafs that we has, have is our worst enemy. A'da aduwuk, as the Holy Prophet sallallahu has said, A'da aduwuk, nafsuk allati bayna jambayk. Your worst enemy is that very nafs that is in between you. And we know about jihad al-nafs, and we know that it is called al-jihad al-akbar. And all of these kind of cultural, religious, spiritual things that we have inherited from our ma'sumin alayhim salam. So the reason why I use the word cultural is because it's a part of our tradition. It's a part of our inherent understanding of how we see Islam to be. Islam isn't only about rituals or you performing salah in this particular manner towards this particular direction or wudu in this way or issues related to the ahkam or the rulings, uh, the legislative side of Islam, which is very important indeed, but something that uh, encompasses that is our akhlaq, is our level of self-discipline, our interest in wanting to engage in self-purification, in tahara to nafs, in tazkiyah to nafs. So we avoid our hearts turning hard, turning dark. And that's why, you know, this, this concept of qaswatul qalb or the hardening of the heart is something really, really dangerous that we need to stay away from and avoid. And that's why in the Quran, in the Sunnah of Ahlul Bayt, you know, it, it, taught, it reminds us that we need to stay away from uh, the hardening of the heart, you know, Kalla bel rana ala qulubihim. Or the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he says, Inna al quluba la tarin. Um, that our hearts will become hardened, will become rusted, will uh, become polluted. And in one hadith, the Holy Prophet himself says, وَجِلَاءُهَا Quran," And the way we're able to cleanse it, the way we are able to purify our heart is Al-Quran, Qira'atul Quran. And seeing that we are in the holy month of Ramadan, what a blessed opportunity, what a wonderful opportunity it is for us to uh, build that relationship with the Quran, to revisit the Holy Quran and it become a habit of ours that we continue to recite the glorious words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as is mentioned in Al-Quran Al-Kareem. And so uh, Tazkiyah, uh, as far as the meaning is concerned, we know. How about the importance of Tazkiyah? Well, if we were to say that Tazkiyah is the primary is the main goal and objective of the Anbiya alayhim salam I think that would be enough of a hint as to how important tazkiyah and self-purification is. In more than one place in the Qur'an and specifically in Surah to Ali Imran and also Surah to Jum'ah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off explaining the purpose of bi'athatul anbiya, of the sending or the appointing of prophets to be messengers among the people by saying, yuzakihim wa yu'allimhumul kitaba wal hikmah. That the anbiya was sent, like in Surah Al Jum'ah, for example, and, and uh, it, um, it says in the ayah, هو الذي بعث في الأميين رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة. In also in سورة آل عمران as well it says ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب. And so 
even before the teaching of Al-Kitab and Al-Hikmah, uh, the Anbiya are going to be focusing on Al-Tazkiyah, on instructing the people, on giving them uh, guidelines or methods in how they are able, how us people are able to purify ourselves, on how we are able to stay within that very important boundary of obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through keeping our hearts clear. This qalbu salim is something that is regularly spoken about in ilmul akhlaq as well. And so these kind of uh, subjects, these topics, um, they refer back to these ulum, these, some, some of these certain sciences that deal with uh, these issues, ilmul akhlaq, ilmul irfan, you know, you know, even with Sufis, you know, they have this important of taskiya, tahliya, takhliya. Um, not to say that, you know, uh, we are void of this, you know, in the own teachings of Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salam, but it's something that ex is extended in many different areas of our religious heritage and teaching. Now, if we were to understand it in this particular way, that the objective, the primary goal, uh, the main objective of uh, the sending of prophets is to teach people how to keep their selves, keep their nafs pure. And of course, there's a lot of evidence that points to that. Uh, we understand that we're able to look into this through the importance of ilmul akhlaq. Now, why is it that the Holy Prophet وسلم, has said, Innama bu'ithtu li utammim makarim al akhlaq, the one purpose as to why it is the main reason as to why it is that I was sent was for the purpose of perfecting uh, the levels of akhlaq or the qualities of morality and akhlaq. Now, we know, if we want to be honest to ourselves, how uh, devastating our society is, how really difficult it is to find someone who really is pure, really is genuine, really stays away from sin or debauchery or moral corruptment and things like that. And we know within our own community how we all suffer from these kind of issues and problems. They might be internal, they might be external. External in the sense of backbiting and gossiping and deceiving and uh, betrayal and abuse and uh, oppression. In internal, as far as hypocrisy, double standard, all these other kind of jealousy, envy, all these other if we could say akhlaqi vices, akhlaqi sins that we are able to see and all of us are somehow affected by it. At the same time, we can't say that we are immune from not falling into these issues. Why are we, why am I so confident to say that, oh yeah, no, you know what, I don't have none of these issues and none of these problems. That itself is ghurur, it's me having that level of pride and that itself is a sin. That itself is far away from self-purification. So somehow we all are all at, at guilt in, um, of course, having some kind of fault within ourselves, which that itself is what we need to be focusing on. And just imagine, my dear brothers and sisters, how good the world would be if each and every one of us were obsessed only with ourselves, with, were concerned only with what it is that we are doing. How good would, will our families become? How good would our relationship come, be, become between husband and wife, between parents and children, between siblings, between colleagues at work, between uh, people in a, in a community? You know, the one major problem that we see couples falling into, filing for divorce and things like that is the most regular sentence that we always hear is lack of communication, no communication. How could that be? 
If you're so good with communicating with your colleague at work or with clients or with customers or with friends, then why is it that it has become such uh, an obstacle for you uh, hindering that very uh, progressing of your relationship by you not being able to have a healthy uh, dialogue or a healthy conversation and communicate with your spouse. These all have root problems. These all come from underlying issues that we all need to deal with. And that's why the Holy Prophet ﷺ has said, عَلَيْكُمْ بِمَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ You need to start focusing on the qualities, on the better qualities of akhlaq. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ بَعَثَنِي بِهَا Because this is what the Holy Prophet sent me with. Or for the purpose of focusing on makarim al-akhlaq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent me for that. On the opposite side, however, on the opposite side, we are able to see that, oh, oh sorry, before I get to that, we are able to see that uh, the Holy Prophet has said, أَكْثَرُ مَا تَلِجْ بِهِ أُمَّتِي The most thing that will allow my ummah through using that or through having that to enter into heaven, أَكْثَرُ مَا تَلِجُ بِهِ أُمَّتِي الْجَنَّةِ Enter into heaven. تَقْوَى اللَّهِ وَحُسْنُ الْخُلُقِ Is piety and being wary of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and good akhlaq, good mannerism, husnul الْخُلُقِ Good conduct, good behavior. Here we're talking about discipline, we're talking about tarbiyah, we're talking about correct understanding of how we are able to nurture our nafs in the in the best way. We're keeping it under control. So أَكْثَرُ مَا تَلِجُ بِهِ أُمَّتِي الْجَنَّةِ تَقْوَى اللَّهُ حُسْنُ الْخُلُقِ That which is going to enable, um, mostly enable my ummah, sorry, I'm just doing very simultaneous translation here, my ummah in entering into heaven is and the opposite of that, that's which is what I wanted to mention uh, in sequence, is the opposite. That which is going to be the most reason as to uh, why most of uh, uh, my ummah, or the most reason as to why my ummah, uh, people from my ummah will be entering into hellfire, الأجوثان البطن والفرج is going to be because of lusts and desires of the stomach or the private parts sexual desire or gluttonous desire and of course these are areas which lead into vice which of course علم الأخلاق deals with علم الأخلاق pretty much is dealing with you trying to have balance in life, you trying to make sure that you stay away from this level of extreme and that level of extreme. Now, um, and alhamdulillah, one of the things that we, as I mentioned in the beginning, one of the things that we are very proud of when it comes to our religion is in uh, religion Islam is that focus on akhlaq that interest in wanting to make sure that your main priority in you engaging with religion is akhlaq. Imam al-Sadiq he says, you don't test someone by how much they pray or how much they fast because it probably has become an a'ad, it's probably become just a, a routine, a habit, but it's shallow, it's meaningless. But you test someone, you test a mu'min by sidqul hadith wa ada'ul amana, by how truthful they are, how loyal they are. And that's how you test a mu'min, of course, sidq and amana and the observing of uh, something that is entrusted to you, whether that be 
something of value, or whether that be a secret, whatever it may be, that's what you, what you uh, test someone by. That's the scale that we use to be able to see whether this person really is a God-fearing, a God-weary, a God-conscious kind of person. That's the important thing. It's all about finding balance and not going to any level of extreme. And that's why we really need to look into the Qur'an and the lessons in the Qur'an, the stories in the Qur'an, the stories of Ahlul Bayt salam. And I'd like to share with you one really interesting hadith that I saw that would be beneficial for all of us. A man came to the Holy Prophet and he sat between the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi and he said, Ya Rasulullah, Maldin, O oh, Messenger of God, what is religion? And then the Holy Prophet answered by saying, Husnul Khuluq, by you having good manners, by you having good akhlaq. And then he came to his right side and he said, So he was sitting in front of him, then he came to his right side and then he asked again, What's religion? What is religion? And the Holy Prophet said, Husnul Khuluq. You see, this is one of the problems, one of the things that I'm going to be dealing with and discussing. You know, a lot of people, you know, they want to get into uh, akhlaq and, you know, oh, irfan and sayru suluk and let, what, what kind of dhikr should I use or what should I do while standing on one foot and uh, these kind of, you know, unorthodox spiritual, unorthodox spiritual or uh, ways of disciplining oneself and everything we already have here with uh, the irfan of Ahlul Bayt salam, the akhlaq of Ahlul Bayt salam. and that's why even our ulama, our urafa, they never went outside of the boundaries of what it is that Ahlul Bayt salam, have mentioned and so um, Yes. A third time, he came. He said to the Holy Prophet, this time coming on his left side, and he said, Maldin, what is religion? And the Holy Prophet again answered for a third time, Husnul Khuluq. And then he went behind the Prophet and he asked the Prophet. So he's what, probably eager, wanting to get some more kind of answers, a more in-depth answer wanting to know um, some kind of uh, technical way or a deeper way or something like that. But everything's very simple. You know, someone came to the late Imam Khomeini, rahimahullah, and asked him, okay, you know, what's the best thing for me to start with spiritual wayfaring and, and, and um, excelling in my spiritual side and things like that? He said, like, and even other uh, urafa, ulama, maraji' who, like Marhum Sheikh Bahajat, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, the Grand Marja as well, said, you know, something simple. It's simple as Qur'an, simple as Risala Amaliyya, the, the book of laws of uh, your Marja Taqlid, simple as Qur'an and Mafatih al-Jinan. These are simple things that you, if you ad adhere to, that itself is really, really a big struggle. That itself will occupy your whole life. And then the Holy Prophet sallallahu turned to him and he said, Ama tafqah? Don't you understand what I'm trying to say to you? And he said, Huwa an la taghdab. And that is that you don't get angry as well. So, of course, you know, entering into this whole issue of akhlaq and virtues and vices and uh, answering of how we are able to deal with these things. The Holy Prophet ﷺ said, Husnul Khuluq, Husnul Khuluq, Husnul Khuluq, three times. And then, of course, he said, don't you understand? It's all about you disciplining yourself, not getting angry, for example. That's the, for example, first step into you understanding what Husnul Khuluq means. So it's all about uh, our actions, our deeds, our comprehension of how we are able to understand 
all of these things that we're dealing with in this life. You know, why are we going through trials and tribulations and difficulties? It's all about how we are able to progress, to improve, to conduct ourselves in the best way. It's about gaining that happiness, uh, that tranquility, understanding the difference between reward and punishment, between heaven and hell, good and bad, and how we can find that balance in order for us to improve ourselves on all these levels, combating against ourself, making sure we suppress those wrong things, those bad things, those whimsical desires that we might have in ourself for the, for the purpose of gaining that proximity and closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, we will continue on in our next episode. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وآله الطاهرين